All right, we're going to transition now to our investment in ag tech panel and uh, it is very much my honor, let me see, to introduce uh, Nancy Sullivan. Uh, Nancy is the CEO and Managing Director of Illinois Venture. She also happens to be the most empathetic, sophisticated leaders that I have ever had the fortune of being around and I'm very grateful that she is moderating this panel, but not just moderating, well, well, is, is great at peppering her own insights into this as well. So uh, thank you so much, Nancy, and I will let you take it away. Well, thank you, Laura. That's the nicest introduction I've ever had. What a pleasure to be here. I, uh, it, we did, as many of these calls go, a pre-call with an amazing group of folks today. So I'll take a quick second to tell you about our panelists, but they're going to do their best to do their elevator pitch to introduce themselves. So today we have Michael Lavin, Dennis Beard, as well as we have Darren from ADM. And I'm going to ask Michael to take a, up to 90 seconds to introduce himself and his firm. Oh, 90 seconds is definitely not much. Um, well, first, first uh, it's great to see a lot of familiar faces, and it's really an honor to be a part of this panel. And uh, hello, Dennis, hello, Laura, and Darren, and lots of other friends here. Um, this is also really special to me on a personal note because the University of Illinois is my alma mater. And um, if I had more than 90 se seconds, I would tell you a funny story where I actually, uh, I started in business administration at the University of Illinois, but with a concentration in food and agribusiness management. So I took a number of electives. And at one point, I was the only person in that concentration. And so, of course, my wisecrack comment was, so basically, I'm at the top of my class. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and or the bottom, depending on on how much of an optimist you are. And uh, and I had to switch, so I switched into finance, continued to take electives, and basically learned what I hope makes me uh, dangerous enough on the science and ag side and food side, and um, did a lot of those those fun courses. Um, and then I became an investment banker and I represented uh, founder and family owned companies was my specialty on their exits to uh, the Fortune 500 and tier one private equity firms. did that for many years. Apart from those responsibilities, I also led with two other people, um, the uh, corporate development strategy and M&A strategy for Mesro Financial, which is a, a diversified financial services firm that manages about $100 billion of assets, also based here in Chicago, where I still reside. Um, although I travel a lot, um, and uh, uh, back in 2017, I, I, you know, as true love would normally have it, you always find your way back to your passion and your true love, and and that is agriculture and food for me. And, and I started Germinate Ventures and basically married all this together. Um, sorry for the romance references, <laughs> and uh, and we are we are a very unique investor in the space where we focus exclusively on this one sector in the deep sciences and technologies that are emerging from it um, that have really the promise for the most impactful outcomes that we do not invest in novelties. We're looking for serious transformative impact. Um, we do a lot of calculus to make sure that we're directing investment to the right places in order to accomplish those goals. Um, and we bring a lot of domain expertise through uh, a team that brings about 350 years or more of, of food, agriculture, technology, innovation, expertise and experience um, all at the C-suite level, and everybody throughout our organization has been a founder, which is really key to our DNA and our approach with founders. Um, how did I do? Great. <laughs> Welcome, Michael. It's great to have you here. I'm going to ask Dennis to do his introduction. Good to see you, Dennis. Thanks, Nancy. Good to see you, Michael. Good to see you, Darren. Um, yeah, my name is Dennis Beard. I'm right here in Champaign, and um, I'm with Sarah Ventures. I'm one of the partners at Sarah. Um, a little bit about me and our firm. I started out in the financial services sector, moved into operations. I started out with Pricewaterhouse Coopers. After a nice career there, I came to Champaign-Urbana, um, uh, was a financial manager of a scientific instrument company, then bought a company of my own and ran it for several years and started doing investing with Open Prairie Ventures about uh, 20 years ago. Uh, seems like it was just yesterday, and we had some nice success with Open Prairie. Many of you know Open Prairie, uh, still cooking and focusing on the ag space, and we work very closely with Open Prairie. And, um, and I joined Tim Hare, who was a former Open Prairie portfolio company CEO, to form the first Sarah Capital Fund. Tim was already doing consulting through uh, Sarah Ventures. 
and we've grown that to uh, 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 let's see, well, it's a total of six funds now, three three sort of core funds with a couple of sidecars. And then uh, happy to say we just launched with the first close of our ag tech fund, and we're still raising money on that. We'll probably be raising till later this year, uh, targeting $50 million. And we're going to do uh, ag and food technologies uh, from Series C through Series A as our first check-in. Real excited, and we've made a couple investments in that fund already. We just did the first close in late January. Um, let's see what else uh, in that fund uh, and, and our prior funds we've done. Uh, I think we've done a total of 12 ag and food tech uh, um, investments, including just to throw a few names out that many of you will be familiar with Agrable, 640 Labs, Tillable, Hazel Technologies and Label Insights. Label Insight, those are some of the ones we're in. We're in, in several others as well. We're real happy with how that's going. And um, we're proud supporters of the U of I Research Park. I've been a long time entrepreneur in residence and we're also proud supporters of the new Illinois Ag Tech Accelerator and the G-Beta Ag Tech program that many of you have heard about and uh, um, will continue to hear about. Uh, so all exciting. I'm, uh, um, I'm also on the faculty at the College of Business and uh, have been uh, an adjunct lecturer there for an amazing 25 years. Well, welcome, Dennis. And Darren, good to see you. Hi, uh, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Sure can. Wonderful. Uh, so we just heard from April from ADM, so I won't go too much into kind of what ADM is, but I'm a uh, managing director of ADM Ventures. We are the uh, corporate venture capital group for ADM. Uh, just in a nutshell, ADM, we're a large uh, purchaser of, of, of farmer output, right, of, of, uh, of plant production. Uh, we process that into kind of higher value added uh, ingredients and oils, uh, primarily for the for the human and animal nutrition markets. That we also support industrial and and, and biofuels as well. Uh, so at ADM Ventures, you know what we do, we, we invest in in up and coming uh, startups that are kind of within uh, our uh, placement of the food ag supply chain. You know, we're we're kind of right in the middle of the value chain. You know, between the farm and, and the and the CPG uh, customers of ours. Uh, and we're looking for companies uh, that can help us be more efficient. Uh, they can kind of plug holes in our portfolio, uh, looking for, for missing ingredients or provide uh, new growth opportunities for us. And, and when we invest in these companies, you know, not only are we giving them capital, but we're partnering with these companies, right? You know, we're, we're really leveraging ADM's assets and our people and our expertise and our customers to help those startups uh, become commercial ready a lot faster than they could uh, do uh, on their own. And so, you know, that's one of the things we're really proud of. You know, we're not just writing checks, we're, we're, we're really uh, collaborating with these companies and, and helping them grow. Um, obviously, if, if it's a CPG, uh, you know, a, a food um, company, we could, uh, you know, supply them with ingredients or flavors or even product development capabilities. You know, that that's one of the unique things about ADM that really sets us apart from our, uh, uh, com, you know, closest competitors is our ability uh, to, uh, you know, offer flavor and offer those full finished product development uh, opportunities, uh, particularly in, in the human nutrition markets. Uh, and, and health and wellness really ties in with that as well. But, uh, you know, I, I think that, that that's kind of a, you know, a snapshot of who we are and, and I'll leave more room for, I guess, the open discussion here. Thank you. Fantastic. So the way this is going to work, we're on a really concentrated timetable. We're going to try and do fast peppering of some questions and answers and then leave a few minutes to make sure we take care of our audience questions. And we're here in an investor panel at Ag Tech. So maybe I'll ask Dennis to kick off some thoughts on what are you seeing in the trends in the investing on the Ag Tech side? And are there any specific effects in other sectors you're seeing? Um, trends in investing, that's an interesting topic. And, and of course, we're raising our fund right now and pitching uh, what we're doing to our investors. We're, we're tending to look at this just on the pure sort of an investment side. We're seeing this as a growing and, if you will, a, a category kind of coming into its own. Uh, you, you know, all, all of us here on the panel know just a few short years ago, um, there weren't a lot of people in the country or in the world, for that matter, focusing on investing in the early stages, especially in this space. Not very many players and, and the number of players 
is increasing, the number of rounds that are being financed, the amount of money that is coming into each round is getting bigger. Um, so uh, and I think that's a good thing. That's great for the entrepreneurs. Um, we don't invest on our own going into companies. So we like to have partners who are also interested in investing. So to see more venture funds, more sophisticated angels and more sophisticated corporate investment groups coming in, we think that's just a real positive thing. Um, and I don't want to I, I don't want to take uh, too much here with my minute here. But when you look at some of the trends that are going on in the food and ag space, it's it just feels really unique right now. Um, uh, piggybacking on some of the comments earlier about, you know, what's the next Tesla? You know, I don't really have the answer to that one, but I, I, I get excited about a lot of different things. And, you know, this, this, this uh, demographic shift to the millennials right now and some of the, some of the views that the millennial generation is, is forwarding is, uh, are exciting to us. You know, they have uh, opinions about food and food safety and where my food comes from and how it's affecting our planet. And we think there's a lot that we can do helping entrepreneurs or helping solve those problems. Hey, Dennis, that's a great segue to Darren. Because Darren, I think at ADM, you may be seeing some um, polls from consumers. What are consumers demanding as you think about it from an ADM trend and areas? Can you talk a little bit to us on ag trends and how that demand, as Dennis alluded to, from millennials and consumers are affecting trends? A absolutely. You know, as I mentioned, you know, our customer base are primarily the large uh, food and beverage CPG, um, you know, companies that you know well, Nestle, Pepsi, companies like that, right? And, and you know, their ultimate consumer, you know, the end consumer, what they're demanding really is, is kind of two things. It's really changing a lot of things within uh, you know, ag tech and, and investing in our space, you know, one is alternative proteins, right? Um, we've seen a huge demand for, for plant-based proteins. And these are things like your impossible foods or your beyond meat. Uh, and another thing is, is sustainability, right? They want, they want a sustainable product, right? And, and certainly alternative proteins, plant-based proteins that ties in with sustainability, but you know, our, our customers, our CPG customers are, are demanding both of those things. And really what that's creating is, is, is a pool in the market from, from the, you know, the, C, the consumer and the CPG side uh, to, to demand different product for, from farms, right? You know, so more uh, you know, soy uh, protein, right? Or a more pea protein and, and things like that. And an ability to kind of trace and track uh, the sustainability of, you know, what was used on that farm were friendly um, kind of inputs, you know, less nitrogen, things like that uh, been used on the farm. And, and how do we prove that to, to you know, to that, uh, to Pepsi, for example. And, and so technologies that can track and trace and, and blockchain and all of these things are, are really, uh, you know, coming to the forefront now. And it's very exciting. Wonderful. Thank you. And Michael, I'm going to switch to you a little bit as the founder of Germinate and some of the areas where you've been investing. What are the trends you're seeing and what maybe excites you the most about those trends? Yeah, first, um, I'll say for a long time, there was, there's been a lot of investment that has gone into infield ag tech on the, on the remote sensing side, whether it's aerial or it's in soil sensing or it's uh, uh, remote monitoring of cattle and livestock and such. And I think that that has become quite invested in at this point and investors are sort of uh, moving on, you know, they're finding new areas to invest in. And I think they've also during this, these last few years have realized that companies pitching a technology that has an end of season outcome in the form of yield improvement is indeed interesting, but that's not all that matters. And farmers are thinking about risk and time and basically working capital because to make an outlay for some new ag tech innovation at the front end of the season with an uncertain outcome with all these other variables in between and the constraints due to the fact that they're buying their inputs at retail prices and selling at wholesale doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And so we're actually, and we always have been focused on finding areas of opportunity, not just on the, basically the agronomy side, which is where we see like the remote sensing and basically uh, um, improving your, your agronomic pra practices, your efficiency in agronomy and your outcomes from agronomy, but actually technologies that, um, that transform the agribusiness side of, of the industry. 
And, and so that's taken us to the world of FinTech. And, and basically we've done a really interesting analysis where we evaluated all of the FinTech companies that we could basically find and we categorized them. And we, we looked at what made them successful, what made them not successful, who they partnered with and who they didn't partner with and basically displaced. And we took that knowledge and our domain expertise of ag tech, and we've basically layered it together and tried to figure out, okay, what kinds of fintech platforms can really radically change this industry? And that's what took us to a company called Bushel, which is becoming the digital infrastructure for the grain industry. And they've already got about 20% of all North American grain being traded and transacted over, the, over their digital platform. This is the, the new digital infrastructure or plumbing for that sector. And the next products that, um, that they're gonna be launching are very exciting and can help change that working capital um, paradigm for farmers. And it could also make them, uh, give them greater access to lending products and to insurance products and things of that nature. And effectively other ag tech companies can exist on top of this. And so that's basically what we mean by transformation, um, by definition. And that's very exciting to us. And I think we and the other investors in our ecosystem can expect a lot more um, in those types of areas. It's a perfect segue to Dennis, actually, and kind of you've just raised a new fund, Ag Focused. And we've got a number of entrepreneurs here. It is the investment panel. Can you talk to us a little bit like Michael talked about? What do you look for in the investments? What is what sparks your interest, and where are areas that you're thinking about? Sure. Um, well, you know we've kind of got a broad set of filters, uh, and expect uh, in the broad filters, every team and and technology would meet some of those filters. Um, you know, we want to see an experienced team. They need to have a disruptive technology that has some staying power, some protection, some moats around it, whether that's patents or trade secrets. Um, they need to be capital efficient. Uh, they need to be serving a large market. And um, ideally, we'll see some evidence that there's a good product market fit. And probably the best indication is, is sales. Enough revenues from real customers to, to show that uh, there's something here in a business model that might work. Well, that's kind of broad. Uh, from this particular fund that we're calling our ag tech fund, you know, uh, some of those things I mentioned earlier, uh, uh, some of the uh, uh, factors driven by, by the millennials and, and just general new taste. We see it here in a lot of America, but I think it factors through much of the world. You know, sustainability, health and wellness, convenience, uh, food safety those kinds of factors, uh, sometimes uh, like Michael was mentioning, building on some of the existing technologies that have, have come into their own recently, like AI and uh, machine learning, uh, some of those uh, skills. Uh, Darren, you put me to mind of one of our non-ag companies that we made a few years ago in Track and Trace. We've got an investment in a really exciting company out of Wisconsin that helps uh, hospital pharmacies uh, track and trace where all their drugs and materials that go into their compounding pharmacies come from. But you can imagine, you know, you get bad food, you want to know where it came from. You get a bad drug, uh, you need to know where it came from right away. And uh, uh, knowing that, you know, we look for those same kinds of technologies here. Um, so anyway, if, if you can kind of fit into that category, the teams are really important. Uh, the stage is not quite so important. We don't have the wherewithal with this still relatively small fund to jump in at a series B or C in a big way. So we're still coming in early and probably about 40% uh, of our companies will come in a series C and the rest will be C plus A. Wonderful, thanks Dennis. And mm -hmm. Darren, I'm gonna to switch to you a little bit. You know, as you think about what different groups on financial investing are looking for in ag tech, as a strategic investor in some cases, what's ADM looking for? And maybe what does ADM bring to the table when they make those investments? Where's some unique pieces that come out of it? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Nancy. Uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, you know, we're not just writing checks like a, like a financial VC. You know, we're really looking to partner and collaborate with these companies. Uh, you know, th 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 there's a couple of things, right, in terms of how, how we can collaborate uh, in help these companies. And really that's, you know, as mentioned, leveraging our assets and our people, right? So if it's a fermentation technology, well, we, we're one of the largest fermentation companies in the world. And, and we have uh, those assets as these companies scale up those technologies. Um, we also have the feedstock that can go into, into the fermentation, right? The dextrose or some, and things like that. 
uh, you know, if, if it's a, a final finished food product, right, we have ingredients and flavors and product development uh, that we could offer this company. And, and, and I think most importantly, you know, which is where the startups really uh, like to, uh, to work with us is really that, that B2B um, commercial channel, right? And so, you know, we're doing business in, in over 200 countries and, you know, essentially all of the large uh, Fortune 500 uh, CPGs, food and beverage companies, uh, those are our customers, right? And, and if this uh, particular startup has an ingredient in, in human nutrition, for example, we can really plug that into our portfolio of offerings, right, for all of our customers. And so, you know, what are we looking for? It's kind of three things, you know, in general on, on startups is one, you know, how, how does this startup help us be more efficient in our operations? Uh, two, how, how does uh, this startup offer a solution, you know, as I mentioned, kind of a missing ingredient in our pantry of ingredients that we can kind of plug it, plug that hole with, uh, with that relationship with that startup? Or, or, or three, you know, it's, it's does this company offer a product or solution that offers kind of a new area of growth, right? Maybe it's a new alternative protein, uh, like a synthetically derived, you know, fermentation based protein uh, that, that we can, you know, ha have access to and build on our portfolio. Fantastic. And although it feels like we have just started, we're actually in the final minutes of it. And I want to make sure I get a chance to address the questions we've seen from the audience. And I'm not going to curtail this to any specific panelist. Would you please jump in if you have sort of thoughts and feelings on it? As we talked about different areas of interest, one of our questions that have come through, is there any interest that this group is seeing or a growing interest in CEA novel farming systems and investing in that area? And anyone can jump in to help answer. And we do have one more audience question I'd like to get to as well. I suppose I'll jump in. Um, I've seen a lot of interesting technology inputs for controlled environmental, controlled environment ag uh, actually coming out of the Netherlands. I think they have a long history from their greenhouse um, uh, infrastructure. So really, like that's where we've actually focused a lot of our canvassing of that market. Um, that being said, we are really intentional about not investing in controlled environment ag. Um, we just don't think it moves the needle to raise several hundreds of millions of dollars to build an infrastructure to grow leafy greens, <laughs> which are very, very low on a nutritional basis. And they're very underwhelming on that basis. You're not going to feed the world with that type of strategy. Um, I mean, if you were to grow something more nutritious, like a cereal crop, that would be revolutionary. Um, actually, I think there are some crops that could be really interesting from a sustainability trans, uh, uh, perspective, like asparagus, which is a grass that could totally grow indoors, but right now it travels a lot through air freight. So it has a really bad carbon footprint, but everyone is focused on leafy greens. And basically that's just taking a stab at Taylor farms in effect. Um, that doesn't really move the needle for us. Thanks for that, Michael. And I'm going to quickly see if one of you would also answer a question as it relates to the scale of ag tech. One of our, one of our um, attendees that notices it may take a little longer, might be a little slower. And the key question here is, do you as an investor change your metrics or the timing around your metrics as it relates to traction, meaning revenue, customer pilots, based on maybe ag tech's a little slower uptake? That's a great question, uh, Nancy. Um, you know, the North American cycle for ag and, and row crops can be torture uh, it, it, with some of our companies, but unfortunately, um, you know, it doesn't really change the metrics on the kinds of returns we need to deliver. So uh, to our investors, and so we have to find ways to live within those parameters and, and still deliver. And it just takes, uh, thought and planning and creativity and and uh, rolling up your sleeves and getting there and trying to help the companies hit those milestones uh, uh, maybe, maybe it involves having test plots outside of the United States in, in you know different seasons and uh, uh, but it's tough you know I don't know if Darren or Michael want to add to that but that's the first thing that jumps to my mind thank you Dennis. yeah th this is Darren speaking I mean Dennis you're absolutely correct uh, you know th the fact that you know crops are only Right, grown and harvested, you know, planted and harvested once a year in, in North America, right? That limits, 
your ability to really test these technologies, right? It, you, you're kind of limited to kind of one testing cycle there. And, and certainly you can go down in Brazil and there, there's a few, you know, climates down there, but, uh, you know, by and large, a, a small startup is going to have trouble accessing the, those markets. And it, it does kind of extend the timeline, right? But it's it's not, not so long, right? I mean, if, if you think of other things like biotech and pharma, you know, sometimes it, it, it can take them you know, 10 years to develop the drug, right? And, and I think a lot of these, you know, crop protection, biologicals, and, and you know, various seed technologies, you know, we, we can do that a little bit quicker, right? We can maybe cut that time in half. And so, um, you, you know, it hasn't steered investors away from, from the industry. Uh, there's still a lot of money to be invested in, in, in this, in this, um, in this area. So, you know, happy to see a lot of uh, startups, you know, I think it's increasing number every year since I've uh, been doing this for the past six or seven years. Thank you. And to, to Darren's point, Brazil is really interesting, but we also have a portfolio company that uh, created a new variety of soybean that produces casein protein in the beans, which is just an incredible accomplishment. And it's actually at expression levels that are beyond cost competitive with uh, commercial uh, casein. And um, and they, they're scaling up their seed lines by actually taking them to um, a partner that's I can't mention here, but um, uh, basically multiplying them in in Hawaii, uh, you just grow it year round, and um, you get the full full year benefit. Well, I just want to say thank you all. I cannot believe our time went as fast as it did. Uh, it's been a great pleasure to talk with each of you on behalf of the 187 participants. Thank you. It's just great to hear, and I'm sure you're open to hearing from different members of this community as they look to move their ideas forward. So. Much appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks. Take care, everyone.